So a friend of mine by the name of Craig, he has a couple of little ducks. And his ducks are teenagers. And since the weather's starting to turn all cold and be wintry, he was starting to feel bad for his little young ducks. And he decided to bring his ducks indoors one night because it was gonna be too cold. And he was gonna set up a new warmer spot for them with a heat lamp. He decided to keep them inside his extra bathroom. He figured how much damage could three little ducks actually do? And well, the answer to that question is... I mean, it's like a Jackson Pollock painting with duck poop, right? <laughs> and yes, today's video is all about the perils of keeping ducks in winter and the things that you should do and not do when you're in those situations. <laughs> I know this is a video about how to raise ducks and geese in winter, but one pro tip for being married in winter is always start your wife's car. It'll make her so much happier when she has to go off to work. Hey buddy boy, how's it going? Huh? How are you doing this morning? How's it going pal? How are you doing? Huh? How are you doing? Oh yes, you have a good night? Yeah? Yeah? Sit. Good boy. Because we live in northern Vermont in an extremely cold climate, people often ask me how I'm able to keep ducks and geese in the winter. Are they able to handle the cold? Do I need to give them heat? How do I keep their water from freezing? What do you feed them? I get so many emails about these questions, so I wanted to make this video to give you guys a snapshot of how I approach raising my ducks and geese. And probably first and foremost, the thing I would wanna start talking about is the same thing that happens whenever you talk about waterfowl. You need to be thinking about your water. Water and water management is like, I don't know, 75% of raising ducks and geese. If you can handle that part, everything else is exceptionally easy, but managing their water can be challenging and managing their water when your temps are like negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, that comes with a whole bunch of problems to solve. But after doing several winters up here in Vermont and having ducks and geese, I can tell you that it's not that bad. And the thing that people often are afraid of doing, which is having their water freeze, isn't a big problem. What you really need to focus on is making sure you're getting fresh water to your ducks and geese and making sure that you have enough water for your birds, enough water that they can dunk their head in, enough water that they could even go swimming in. If they can do those things, it does so much good for their health. And so if you can focus on just constantly refreshing that water, they're gonna be in great shape. Now I know that probably sounds like a lot of work, but in reality, it's not that bad because all you're doing is taking the old water, dumping it out, and then pouring fresh water. And so even if it freezes, it's not a big deal. As far as water receptacles go and like things to keep water in, I'm actually a big fan of these hard plastic tubs that you can get at like a farm supply store. They are pretty darn durable. They hold a five gallon bucket of water perfectly. And what's nice is at the end of the day, I can tip them over. If they have ice, I can stomp them out. As far as other water receptacles I like to use, I think these rubber tubs also work really well. Again, they're really durable and that you can stomp on them and crush the ice out. If you're keeping ducks in the winter in a cold climate, you're just gonna have a lot of ice, and so that's a fact of life. So you need to plan for water receptacles that you can manage the ice, not try to prevent the ice. And what'll often happen is the water's gonna splash around and leave a lot of ice. Here's a patch of ice right down there. That's not gonna be so much a problem for the ducks as it is gonna be a problem for the duck keeper. You're constantly gonna be dumping water. You're gonna constantly be dumping ice. The snow is gonna melt, it's gonna freeze. The ducks love to play in it and splash around and make a mess with it and spread it everywhere. So you're gonna have ice everywhere. The thing that I find is the most effective solution there is I actually invest in a pair of crampons. In the past, I was kind of dumb and I'd always forget to wear my crampons. <laughs> Dude, not cool. So yeah, I like to use these. <sighs> They're really durable and strong and they last and they take a beating. The brand that I use is actually the uh, Catula Micro Spikes, and this is not a commercial, I just like these. I've had other rubber spikes and other sort of crampons and less rugged crampons that I've tried to use, 
but they break really easily. When it gets cold, the rubber around these things snaps really easily, but these Catulas are really nice and really durable. People will ask me a lot about using like electric water heaters and heated tanks and that sort of thing. And I got to admit, I don't love them for ducks and geese for a couple of reasons. They're mechanical parts and they can break. They require electricity and not everybody has easy access to electricity. Heck, we didn't even get electricity out to this part of the farm until, gosh, this past spring. And so my suggestion would be just focus on keeping a system to make it easy to get fresh water to your birds versus trying to prevent the water from freezing. Release the Quacken! Howdy, Samson. How's it going, buddy? Unleash the dragons! As far as housing goes, I house my geese. Whoa, incoming. My geese live in this shed here. I think it was originally on the farm as a hay shed. I put a wall up back in 2018 so that I could house the ducks in here in the winter. And even though I did several things to try to make it more secure and safe for the ducks, I did have problems housing ducks in here. You know, I put up chicken wire and hardware cloth as a way to prevent any creepy crawlies from getting in. But unfortunately had a mink attack and uh, lost several ducks as well as many of them were injured. But what I did like about this design was it's very open. And, and when it comes to what do ducks and geese need for winter housing, look, we have very cold temps here. Negative teens and negative 20s each night for weeks on end. You can go down to the 40s easily, negative 40s that is. For folks who are in the you know lower 48 states, we have probably one of the coldest climates you can have and still be in the US. What I found makes such a difference for ducks and geese if you're raising them though is give them lots of fresh bedding and you can even use their bedding to insulate them. So if you like look down here, right? Inside this little space, it is nice and warm. There's no way wind can get in. They've got a nice roof over their heads. And so this is like the perfect spot to be nice and cozy and warm in the winter for a duck or a goose. And as the season goes on, I just start to take some of these bales and start, start to spread it on the ground. And I do a deep litter bedding method because below this bedding is just earth. I don't even remove it during the winter. I just let it keep building up and up and up. It's just layers and layers of manure and fresh bedding. And as long as you're very liberal with spreading that bedding, they're gonna be fine. And come springtime, you're gonna have some amazing compost. Cause I don't worry as much with smaller predators like a weasel getting in here and trying to attack my geese. I mean, no raccoon or weasel is gonna wanna come in here and face 20 honking geese that are angry at them. Doing something sort of open aired like this is not a bad option. The only suggestion I would have is make sure you seal off the walls with hardware cloth if you're gonna be keeping ducks in a setup like this. But it's really important though to have that good ventilation just because if you're thinking about problems that can develop for your birds, not getting enough fresh air is actually one of the bigger risks you're gonna face in the winter. I did take all the lessons learned I had by keeping my ducks in here, and I ultimately built the quack house here. See, ye old quack house. This is like my super duck fortress structure. From a predator standpoint, it's pretty much impenetrable. Every corner is perfectly sealed. I built it myself, I made sure that it was that way. I've got it raised up about 24 inches off the ground. So even for things like a weasel or a mink, it's really hard for them to get in because they can't get the leverage they need to push their way through like a crack or a crevice. And I really spent a lot of time thinking about the design and how this would all work for optimal duck keeping and apparently chicken keeping. Get out of here, chickens. Go, go, go. Come on, out. It's an eight by 16 structure, which I feel like gives me probably enough room for maybe as much as twice as many ducks as I have right now for locking them up at night. I keep my population a little smaller so that on really bad weather days, I can let them stay in here longer. You can see there's that grate down there so that I can put their water and it makes less of a mess. As you can see, it still gets pretty messy over here and a lot of wet straw and a lot of splashing and poop. Ducks are just messy critters who are gonna poop everywhere and splash everywhere. And that's just the price of raising ducks. And so you're gonna have it be gross. But again, what I like to do in a situation like this is, I'm just gonna take some fresh straw. It's really hard to do right now. Holding the camera on one hand. But yeah, you just basically liberally spread around flakes of straw. 
your ducks have nice fresh bedding that they'd be happy to sleep on again. I spread that straw every couple of days and I've never had a problem yet by doing it this way. But unlike the deep litter bedding that I do in the goose house, in the duck house I do try to clean it out a couple times each winter. Clean out though is really simple because all I have to do is pop open this hatch because I've made this specially built door and then I just sweep all the bedding out and then it goes down into this pile that Toby here is standing on. And that's where I let the manure compost. One of the really nice things about having my chickens out here with the ducks and geese is I find that the chickens do a great job of trying to pick through all the duck bedding, looking for scraps of food and other detritus inside the duck litter. And they help turn and move it around and come like say spring or maybe summertime really. This stuff will all be pretty much composted down and we can use it in the garden or I can use it on the trees or other things around the farm. And speaking of chickens, I guess that gets me to another question that people often ask me about keeping birds in the winter. I know some of you guys are often wondering, is it okay to keep chickens and ducks and geese all together and can you mix them all up? And generally speaking, it's fine as long as you're meeting the basic needs of each animal. You know, making sure your chickens have a roost in your goose house, for example, or making sure that ducks and geese have access to deep water that they can dunk their heads into if you're keeping them with chickens. I keep my chickens and ducks and geese more or less separated. I've got enough of each animal that it makes sense to have their own house, but there really is nothing for me keeping them all together. The ducks are a bit skittish. The geese are generally the bullies of the farm, but overall you don't have major issues. In fact, I keep a couple of geese who are the parks and recreation crew inside the duck house just as a way to add a little bit of extra security for the ducks inside there and there's never been a problem with those geese living with the ducks <laughs> As far as feeding my ducks and geese in winter go, it's, I give them a mix of commercially available duck feed and five grain chicken scratch. And really just mix those two things together, about equal ratios of it, and I put it out there. In terms of how much I do per bird, I really don't have a strict science to it. I just watch the birds' food intake and see how much they leave after a given day. My goal is to have them eating pretty much all the food and not having leftover, but also not running out of food by like say one o'clock each day. I find that their food consumption does move up and down depending on the weather. The colder it gets, the more they eat. I also like to supplement their food with kitchen scraps, but I have to be a little bit careful with what I feed to which bird. So generally speaking, we'll take a lot of our vegetable cut so like spinach and kale, carrots and beets and like all the skins and expired produce and stuff that we wouldn't want, old apples, pears, that sort of thing. We'll feed all of that to the birds. I think that it's good to give them that extra supplement. It gives them a little extra roughage and it gives them probably some extra nutrition. Also in the dead of winter, I'll sometimes be known to give them an odd pumpkin or cabbage that didn't quite store all the way through the winter and let them go to town on something like that. When it comes to the summer, right, my geese are eating most of their diet from the pasture. They're not even eating any food coming from me. The ducks are like maybe about a third of their diets coming from me. And so the fact that I have to really supplement in the winter is tough. And it's actually why I keep my numbers of birds so relatively low in the winter, just because I don't wanna to have to have the cost of feeding that many mouths over the course of the winter. I also make sure to supplement their feed with grit and like oyster shell for the layers to make sure that they're getting everything that they need. Because I'm actually not using chicken layer feed, I think that that oyster shell is actually important for the chickens more than anybody else. For the geese, sand is really important in the winter because they need that sand to help digest. And uh, if they don't have it, they're not gonna be as efficient with their feed. And they might not actually even get the full nutrition that they need. <laughs> So yeah, I'm a waterfowl farmer in northern Vermont and I don't use any supplemental heat. I don't use any heated waterers, but I find that it's relatively easy to take care of a whole bunch of ducks and geese and keep them very healthy all throughout the winter, being ready for springtime. All you have to do to be successful is be prepared, be thoughtful, and be efficient. And if you can focus on those three things, your ducks and geese should be pretty happy. If you guys wanna go back in time and see how I've raised my ducks over the years, I actually made this playlist of raising ducks in winter. So be sure to check that one out. And I will see you guys in that next video. So thank you for watching and good luck with your ducks and geese.